Okay, so we're going to go over a little bit of the acid base, guys. I had a request for a lecture, and I won't make it too long. I think people uh, in my second period class may have thought I went a little too fast with the um, Bronson Lowry stuff. So let's just review a little bit. Arrhenius acid was the easiest definition of the acids because he just said that, hey, if I've got some kind of acid, okay, it's going to produce H pluses in solution. If I have some kind of base, it must be a chemical that has a hydroxide in it because, hey, it's got to produce hydroxides. Okay, so Arrhenius acids produce protons in solution and Arrhenius bases produce hydroxides. When you identify Arrhenius acid, you identify an acid clearly with something that has an H, okay, that can be given off. So all of these acids here are Arrhenius acids because they have H's given off. Okay, now to be an Arrhenius base, you have to have hydroxides in your chemical formula. Or the other way to think about it is that if you're an Arrhenius acid, the only positive ion in solution is an H plus ion. Arrhenius base, the only thing negative is an OH minus. Okay, so those limited, lim very limited in scope definitions explain the first acid and bases, but it certainly didn't give and explain uh, other compounds that were clearly bases or acids, and they did not follow that de designation. Uh, case in point, Bronston-Lowry acids, as I said before, are proton donors. They give off protons. For instance, if I take, uh, take let's take um, hydroiodic acid. This acid is an acid because it can donate a proton to, let's say, water. So this gives off a proton to water, and it's going to make H3O+. And it's going to make a compound I negative. Now, notice something. The only thing positive in solution for Arrhenius is supposed to be an H+. Bronston-Lowry introduces the concept of a hydronium ion for the first time. Water can hold on. See, H HI is not just going to give off an H+, and have that sitting out there. These guys are too reactive. And if you're in water, water has way too many free, what, lone pairs that that H plus is going to hold on to. So this is a more credible definition because the Bronson-Lowry people, they define the idea that water is going to hold on that proton very easily, and therefore you're not going to have protons in solution. You're going to have H3O pluses. But the idea of this transfer of protons is the Bronson-Lowry definition. And, and it explains things that don't fall very nicely. Like, for instance, uh, to be a Bronston-Lowry base, you're a proton acceptor. Okay? Now, what does that mean? Well, if you look at the example I just gave you, water just accepted an H+. And we know water, with its two lone pairs, can form that coordinate covalent bond. H+, has no electrons, and it's a nice fit. This is a nice negative orbital. This is positive. So it makes sense that water would hold on. By the way, water can't grab on another one because it's positive. Another proton would repel a positive. That's why water only does it once. All right, so what I was talking about was, and sorry for the little change up here, I'm talking about a, a NH3, okay? And NH3 is a base, but not a bronze, not a Arrhenius base because it does not have a hydroxide in it. So it's a proton acceptor, just like the water I was talking about just a second ago. And the reason why, it has a lone pair. NH3 has that lone pair. And that's why, if you remember your DNA, okay, your nucleic uh, bases, okay, had the nitrogen. And the reason why it's a base, it has that lone pair there. Uh, these guys are called proton accept uh, donators, right? Acids. And it's a nicer definition because it explains chemicals, as I said before, that do not fit the Arrhenius definition. So as I said before in class, ammonia, and let's make this nice and easy, ammonia, and Bronson-Lowry definition like ammonia is I'm going to show you, ammonia with water is able to pull and ionize water an H away. 
So what happens is this lone pair is able to attract an H plus, and this water acts as an acid, a bronston lowry acid, because it donates the proton, and the NH3 acts as the base because it accepts the proton. And what it makes is it makes NH3, NH4 plus, and the reason why it's plus is you added a proton with no electrons, so it's positive now, and you've made H, uh, a hydroxide. So NH3 is a base because indirectly it produces hydroxides, whereas the other bases are essentially salts that give off hydroxides. Now, what I was trying to get to today, for those that uh, had a little problem, if this is a base because it accepts all right, its conjugate pair, conjugate means same chemical, is NH4+. This is an acid. Why? Well, if you go in the reverse, how does NH4 plus become NH3? It does so because it donates a proton. There it is. So this is an acid in reverse. And guess what? If this hydroxide, which by the way has three lone pairs, accepts an H plus, it's acting as a base in the reverse. So my friends in chemistry, we have something called conjugate acid base pairs. Here's a conjugate base. Here's a conjugate acid. Here's a conjugate acid, here's its conjugate base, and there are the pairs. This is a conjugate acid base pair, and this is a conjugate acid base pair. They're the same chemical plus or minus an H. And you're expected in these kind of reactions that are equilibrium, forward and reverse, you should be able to pick out who are the acids and who are the bases. Okay, and that's all we're doing. And I can do another one here, if you'd like. I can do, let's see, um, Let's do a hard one. Let's do HCO3 negative. It's the bicarbonate ion. And let's do um, H3PO4 phosphoric acid. And we'll get into this naming later. Now, you say, my gosh, what do I do here? Well, this is a stronger acid, okay? And uh, we'll get to that. But this guy is going to donate a proton. And guess what? You donate a proton. In the future, this is going to be H2CO3. This is accepting a proton, so this is acting as a, you got it, a base. This is donating. Here's an acid. Okay. Now, H3PO4 gave off an H+, so now it's H2PO4 negative. It has one less. If it's acid in the forward, it's a base in the reverse. Okay. And of course, if it's a base in the forward, it's an acid in the reverse. How does H2CO3 become HCO3 negative? It has to donate an H+. Again, who are my conjugate acid base pairs? Here's my conjugate acid. Okay, here's my conjugate base. And here is my conjugate um, acid. Here's my conjugate base. They're the same chemicals, plus or minus an H. Okay. All right, hope that helped in defining the acid-base pairs in a weak acid-base equilibrium, okay, for the Bronson-Lowry definition. Tomorrow we'll get into Lewis bases. Your homework is to finish the, the back side, okay. Um, and you can see, um, how do I figure out these ba base pairs? What does ammonia become in the future, NH4 plus? Oh, so how did it become an H4 plus? It must have accepted an H, and there you go. Uh, H2O in the future becomes OH minus, so it must have also done something. So that's how you look at to figure these out. So once you have one acid, it should be going nice and easy. So good luck with that. Okay, now, when we have these bronston lowry scenarios, okay, um, we introduce the idea of the conjugate